Good morning and welcome to our time in God's Word together on a Tuesday, October 6th. And we are in, I'm sorry to say, kind of a, I won't say controversial, well yeah, controversial, kind of ugly, kind of, kind of mean piece of scripture. These verses, boy, people have wrestled with them because, wow, isn't that sort of harsh, you know? Mm -hmm. We'll think about whether that's the case and what's really going on here in Romans chapter 1. We're going to sing, we found a hymn neither of us had ever done before, hymn 612. It's a new one by my friend Steve Starkey, uh, pastor up in Bay City. And uh, Steve, congratulations once again. It, um, the tune's a little difficult, but the, the hymn is actually about uh, people who are coming back. And verse 1 is about people who are rebelling against God and and uh, uh, pushing God away. But in verses 2 and 3, when they return, when they come back, like the prodigal son, they have this speech all prepared, and yet they don't even need to give it because the Father welcomes them and embraces them. And in the, and in the third verse, that they are, uh, receive the blessings of heaven. So our text really applies to that first verse, and yet the, the other two verses are the, the good news for us as we turn back to God. So let's sing. As rebels, Lord, who foolishly have wandered. As rebels, Lord, who foolishly have wandered, far from your love, unfed, unclean, unclothed, Squandered, dare hope to glean that bounty which we load. Still we return our contrite words rehearsing, speech that within your warm embrace soon dies. All of our guilt, our shame. of love for us you are preparing we who were lost you give an honored place come eat come drink and be no more despairing here taste again the treasures of Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature 
rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Wow, well read. <laughs> that, that sounded pretty harsh, <laughs> which fits. It does sound pretty harsh, doesn't it? And unfortunately, people have focused very much on just one little part of this, um, the, the, uh, the homosexual behavior in here, as that that's what this is all about. Um, certainly, that is a sign, and the, and the increase of that's the sign of the, of the messed up nature of our world, that we have distorted what God gave. But uh, that's not where it begins, uh, and that's not where it ends. This, this emphasis here at the, in the last verse, though they know God's righteous decree. That's also how it starts. It says, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. They know these things. Do you have, do you have one of these? This is, this, I, I don't usually have this, you know, like for going to bed at night or something. Uh, but people who work during the night and have to sleep during the day, they might wear something like this to block out the sun. I have it because of flying. When you're on a long plane flight, you want to block out the light. You want to, you want to, you know, the awareness of other people. And then I've got these. These are better yet, noise canceling headphones. I can't hear you. Uh, and then with this, you block out everything around you. You know it's there, but you can pretend that it's not. You know what? This is what Paul's talking about. He says to these Christians in Rome, uh, they're surrounded by people who who know something about God, and they're blocking out the things they know. Instead, they come up with other things. They come up with, uh, with things that are more pleasing to them. They would rather not be accountable to a, a God who, who judges things they know to be wrong. It's easier just to sort of, you know, avert the eyes from God's law. I think we see a lot of that now. In fact, we're so much smarter than the Romans, we go one better. We do this. This is the virtual reality headset. And so inside of our virtual reality, we entertain ourselves with movies and games and, and whatever diverts us from the truth of, of God's purity and holiness, God's perfect plan for us. And what happens? Well, inevitably, what happens if, if you're sleeping, that's one thing. But you know, if you're the pilot of the plane and you do this, there's going to be great, great anguish and, and terrible things. If you, if you want to drive, if you want to walk, if you want to go through life with this on, or or spend your life inside this, think of what you will lose. You will have the false version 
of relationships and life. The artificial characters that you make up and not the real thing that God desires for you. And this is what Paul describes here. Uh, he gave them over, he says in verse 24, he gave them up to the desires of their hearts for impurity. He, it's not that God inflicted on them, you know, something of his own invention. He said, okay, this is what you want. Here you go. And it doesn't, it doesn't end well for us when we do that. That's why I like the second and third verses of that hymn. In our, in our reading here, there's not a lot of gospel at this point in this chapter. Paul goes on to a tremendous good news and, and a welcoming gospel. But at this point, he's talking about God's judgment on the world. But in our hymn, uh, As rebels, Lord, who foolishly have wandered far from your love, unfed, unclean, unclothed. But when we recall, dare we recall your wealth so rashly squandered, dare we hope to gain that bounty that we loathed, that, that we rejected, uh, when we return. Our contrite words rehearsing, we find God's embrace. And we don't even get a chance to make our excuses like the prodigal son. Uh, and he welcomes us and he brings us back. Our whole world needs to be welcomed back. Paul tells us these things in order that we may understand where the world is at, not so that we can go out and judge everybody because God's, God's already done that, he says. No, we, we want to understand what's happened here. Go back and offer something better. Heavenly Father, I also have longed for things that were not your plan for me. And when I pursued them, how empty they turned out to be. Your gifts. Even though I don't fully understand them, your gifts, when, when I receive them from you, become the very, very best things. Lord, give me, give us patience and understanding for those who have wandered far. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may lead them home and show them a far better thing and those things they've wandered off to seek. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.